Welcome to the channel. As you may know, in Falcon 4.37, it has implemented the Electronic Countermeasure Panel, also known as the C-9492 ECM Pod Control Panel. It has a lot more functionality, so this video will cover the basics. By the end of the video, you will understand how to use the ECM panel and the general understanding of ECM in BMS. So let's go ahead and get started. For the overview, we'll talk about the ECM theory, how it's modeled in BMS, the C-9492 ECM Pod Control Panel operation, and also using the ECM with your HOTAS. You want to have a jammer pod on your aircraft, you need to make sure you have one actually installed. So make sure you go to your loadout. Right now I have the 131 pod on. There are two pods, ALQ-131 and ALQ-184. In BMS, they both have the same characteristics and the same capabilities. The only difference is that the 131 is 200 pounds heavier than the 184. ECM theory. So the point of ECM is to give your enemy a hard time getting a competent lock with their radar. So if your enemy cannot lock you up, then it's hard for them to fire a missile at you because they don't see you on, on their radar. If you see someone jamming your radar, so if you see on your FCR you see some chevrons, it'll look like this. If you see some chevrons like that, that means someone is jamming in that area. CMS switch, the countermeasure switch, it is aft for consent and then right is off or in standby mode. Effective zones. So these photos that I have here, that's the effective zone. So forward and back, forward and aft, it's 30, 30 degrees. And then once it gets to 60 degrees, it fades from full effect to no effect. So just keep your enemy within that 30 degree cone forward and aft. When it comes to vertically, it's a, it's about, it's kind of tilted downwards because usually your your enemies will be below you that you hope, but it does still work straight on because it, it, it continues out as we go, as it goes out, but it's more canted downwards. So here's the ECM panel. You have off, standby, and operate. Right now, I believe in BMS 4.37 update one, there's only two positions. There's off and there's operate. So once you go into operate, it takes a little bit for it to warm up. So make sure you turn that on before you take off or before you get in, before you need it, make sure you turn that on. So that's the up position, operate. I think it's in the middle for now. The XMIT switches, there's one, two, and three. Those are the different XMIT switches. XMIT one, these are the new stuff in BMS. So XMIT one, the aft antenna, once you, once you do aft consent, the aft antenna is active, not the forward. XMIT two, the aft antenna and the forward antenna will jam. XMIT three is a active ECM on forward and aft and it barrages every button that you have activated so it'll barrage the the program one two three four and five the the downsides of, of them so xmit one it's fine it doesn't it's only behind you xmit two it has a forward 30 percent fcr degrade so it's about in in range so you won't be able to see anybody in front of you by 30 percent if you're using the the four it's the I-band that your radar uses, so it, it, it de decreases the range of your FCR. When implementing the HARM, it disables you to be able to use it using the HARM as sensor and using the HTS pod, so it also disables your ability to use the HAD page on the MFD. But you are still able to use the HARM using POS mode, being that it launches away and it's away from your jammer. I have not personally tested this yet, but I've read and people have told me that once you, if you are foxing an a AIM-120, the forward transmit should cease because it doesn't want to interfere with your your data link for your 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 missile. XMIT three blank ECM 30% FCR degrade because it uses your your program four. It makes HTS and ha has unusable as well. Using XMIT three is not advisable because it shows you it shows you as a jamming target even though they can't see you on radar. So if if they're if they're not looking for you, they could see you as a jamming chevron even though they're not looking for you so that's not advisable to use xmit 3. How it's modeled in BMS like I said there's an ECM chevron here that's what it looks like when when someone's jamming like I said before if you're jamming way out here a hundred miles someone could still see your, your jamming chevron so it's not advisable to use that xmit 3 that I talked about before. FCR symbology some of the newer blocks they use the the chevron here older blocks have a yellow X or green depending on if the the MFD is color or not. Some of the jamming characteristics is unable to burn through, so make sure you adjust your elevation to make sure you're, you're actually looking in the right area of elevation and, and space. 
dumping chevrons lock, so sometimes these chevrons go back and forth and and by distance, so they'll go back and forth and it'd be hard to, to burn burn through. Also, you might have a, a contact and a chevron as well. So once you lock onto them, you can go to STT mode and it'll kind of jump back and forth to, to give you a hard time getting an actual good lock. You could also constantly lose lock. So once you lock someone up, you might have them locked for a couple seconds and then it loses locked lock almost immediately. Now getting into the ECM panel operation. So there are five programs. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's those five programs. One is A, B, and C, band. So it's a certain frequency band. Program 2 is D through E, F, F and G, H and I, and G and H. So those are the different bands based on what button you actually push. And it'll run that band if they're depressed. Each cover of different frequency band can be pressed, enabled, and disabled. Program status. Off is uh, off. S is standby. So is the S here. It's an amber S. That's standby, no consent. A for active. Consent given with the CMS aft. This is this green A here. So each one will will determine which one it's on. T, it's blue. That's transmit on that band. So right here it has all the bands here. So that means it's transmitting on every band, every program and every band. The only way to see which one is transmitting is to look at your ECM pod or ECM control panel and actually see a blue T to see which one is actually transmitting. Here are some of the the breakdowns of the SAM sites. And then the type of radar, the band, and then the program that it's on. If you need any more information, I'll, I'll go over this more in the second, the second part of this ECM video. It'll be a more advanced version. But in your Dash 34, Dash 1, Dash 1, page uh, 128, and in the BMS threat guide has more information on frequency bands and threats. The F, it's a red F. I haven't seen it yet personally, but apparently it could have a fault on it, so just be cognizant of that. It's right here in this corner. So the CMS switch, CMS AF, ECM on, consent. So that's AFT. Semi, auto, enable. You have to be in, in one of these modes. Auto, semi, or, man, or uh, manual. It works. Standby or bypass, I don't, I don't think it works. And of course, off, it won't work. CMS right, so you can put the, the pod in standby. So if you go to the right, it'll just be put in standby. If you have the ECM on, consent, this light will turn to green. It does not mean that it's transmitting. It only means that you are giving consent to the ECM to transmit when needed. So the CMS switch, CMS aft is ECM on or consent, giving consent to the pod. Once you give consent to the pod, it will this green enable light will turn on. This only means that the light the light will illuminate once consent is given. It doesn't mean that something is transmitting. It only means, means that you have given consent to the pod to transmit when needed. The ECM on consent will only work if you're in manual, semi, or auto mode. So one of these modes here. Bypass, it won't work. And standby, it won't work. Won't work. And obviously in off, it, it won't work either. Once you are in consent mode, you can CMS right at any point in time. This light will turn off and your your panel will go to S, standby. Once you're in consent, they will go to A. Once they're transmitting, they will go to transmit. So standby, consent, and transmit. Make sure on your CMDS, make sure you have the jammer switch on, right here, jammer switch on, and of course, make sure one of those are selected so you, it'll work. And those are the basics of the ECM and how to use the pod and the panel in BMS. And have fun out there, and I'll see you in the next one.